Hey everybody, Chuck here from Brand New Vegan. Welcome to Monday. Facebook and Instagram are down, so I thought I'd do something a little different. Uh, I don't have a recipe this weekend anyway because I was at the beach celebrating my birthday. Thank you for all the birthday wishes. It went great. Had a good time. And uh, also, I double booked myself and had to actually give a Zoom presentation from the hotel room uh, at the beach. <laughs> Took my computer and everything. So that went well. But I thought instead of a recipe, I would give you that presentation. And I gave it to a local veg group here in the Northwest. So I hope you enjoy it too. So that's our video today. And I'll get started here. If I can get the right button. Here we go. How a plant-based diet changed my life and saved it too. So if you know me, this is my crazy wife, um, YouTube, brand new vegan community group on Facebook, 23,000 people there. Um, the recipes have been shared in Newsweek and Forbes and all those places. And before COVID, I actually used to go and do live presentations and talks and go to conferences and meet crazy people like Mr. Potato Head up there, Dr. Madugal, and podcasts and all kinds of stuff. Like I said, this is my crazy life as a food blogger. Didn't used to be that way. I actually have an associate's degree in electronics. I worked as a tech in the semiconductor industry for over 30 years. So think Intel, TI, places like that. And that's the getup I used to wear, the bunny suits and the masks. And yeah, we were wearing masks long before wearing masks were cool. But that's what I did for over 30 years, usually on night shift too, graveyard shift. And now I teach people how to eat. How crazy is that? But I help people who are brand new or are struggling with a plant-based diet. I make it easier for them by giving them all their free recipes for their comfort foods they like. People think we eat weird stuff like rocks and twigs and weeds and leaves. I don't know. We eat real food. So this is my hamburger helper. Who hasn't had hamburger helper or mac and cheese or tacos or burritos or chili? I make it easier by giving them their comfort foods. Only plant-based and well-free. So it started in 2008 with a movie called Processed People. I had always eaten typical Western diet, meat, dairy, lots of pizza, burgers, beer, lots of fast food. Like I said, I worked in a fast-paced industry, usually graveyard shifts, and I was technically obese. I didn't know that until I put together this presentation. But at 225, at 6 foot, that's obese. So, eye opening. Um, I had eye blood pressure. I was always stressed out, working night shift, switching back and forth between days and nights on my days off, and I smoked. So I was the picture of health, right? And this movie introduced me to the idea of a vegan diet to better my health. So I told my family, I'm going to be vegan. And you can guess what happened next. Oh yeah, they laughed. My wife did actually throw her apron at me. So, yeah. And she said, I quit. You're cooking. I don't know anything about it. And it's not funny. You know, I could have been hurt. Those aprons are dangerous. Anyway. I wasn't perfect. I had no idea what I was doing. But I did it anyway. And I never gave up. And I got better. I felt better. I looked better. And I lost weight. And I was becoming a pretty good cook, too. Meanwhile, members of my own family, one by one, were becoming sick while they continued to eat their normal American diet. I was a crazy one because I ate differently. It's pretty sad. That's why they call it the sad diet. For a reason. Standard American diet. It's pretty sad. People eat that food and they get sick. So the movie also introduced me to a whole new group of doctors that were whole food plant-based. And I'm sure you recognize a lot of them, if not all of them. Tecum Campbell, Dr. Barnard, Dr. Clapper, Dr. Esselstyn, Dr. Grieger, Dr. Madugal, of course, and Dr. Furman. There's links to their websites and their books, and they're all worth checking out if you've never heard of them. But they taught me you can't just eat any vegan or plant-based diet. You have to eat real food. You got to leave that processed junk alone. And you cannot use fat or oil of any kind. 
and most of them will tell you that, Dr. Esselstyn especially. So I tweaked my diet even more to whole food, plant-based, no oil. And in 2013, I started this little blog to share what I was learning, including my own recipes, brandnewbacon.com, and now obviously I'm on YouTube teaching people how to cook plant-based, also by video. And in 2017, I was actually able to retire from my 30-year high-tech career and become a full-time vegan cook and blogger. So over the next several years, things were going great. Until February 24th, 2020, when I woke up feeling kind of weird one day. And it was a way I had never felt before. And I would soon find myself in a hospital for the very first time in my life. So I was disoriented that morning, kind of dizzy. I'd never felt vertigo before, but I kind of think this is what it, it must have felt like. I was a little bit nauseous, not quite enough to throw up, but it's pretty close. I checked my blood pressure that morning and it was crazy high. And when my wife came home, I tried to tell her, but the words came out funny, kind of sorted. And she did plead with me to go to the doctor. But if you know me, I am stubborn. And I was trained as a first responder when I worked at Corvo as a medical response team responder. I knew better. I didn't have any muscle weakness or any facial drooping. It can't be a stroke. It's got to be something else. It'll go away after a good night's sleep. That's what I told myself. I was wrong. Next day I felt the same way, if not worse. So I finally did go to the doctor and they took one look at me and said, get to the ER now, stupid. And MRI confirmed what everybody suspected. I had a stroke. A little heart-shaped guy right there on my right hand side of my brain. Who'd have thought, right? So please note, if you experience even one of the symptoms like I did, go to the hospital right away, call 911. Don't wait until you have all three of these, like I was stupidly doing. Uh, facial drooping, arm weakness, speech difficulties. It spells out the acronym there, F-A-S-T. you got to act now. They actually have a drug they can give you in the first 24 hours called a clot buster. And they can actually prevent like any permanent damage at all if you get there in time. And there's another cute little meme that explains it too. Face droop arm weakness, speech difficulty, act fast, time's critical. So the official diagnosis from the hospital was an acute ischemic stroke. That's the clot kind, not the hemorrhaging kind. I had dysarthria, probably not pronouncing that right, but uh, trouble speaking. And I had high cholesterol and high blood pressure. And they said from my report, this is a direct quote, you were admitted because of difficulty speaking for 24 hours. An MRI showed a small blockage kind of stroke in your brain. You were seen by a neurologist along with an internal medicine doctor. And a CAT scan of your head and neck was done to look at blood vessels, which did not show any major clot. And an echocardiogram was normal. So all the tests they threw at me, and I was poked and prodded and everything else for a good 24 hours, they were all normal for me. The only thing was out of whack was my cholesterol was high, which I was mad about. My blood pressure was high. Well, yeah, I'm in a hospital. I'm scared, stupid, and I'm stressed. But I had to stroke, and it was affecting my speech. So take this seriously. Every year, more than 800,000 people in the U.S. have a stroke. 600,000 of those is the first time, like me. That's every 40 seconds. And every four minutes, somebody dies from one. So this is serious business, guys. It really is. So... To give the hospital credit, they did a really good job of diagnosing my problem. They did it quickly and accurately and, you know, hats off, excellent job. My complaint is the way they treated me. Pills, of course. Uh, Lipitor for the cholesterol, Losartan for the blood pressure, aspirin for a blood thinner, and Plavex. And this is directly off of my uh, sending me home report. You should take the Webitor, Losartan, Aspirin, and Plavex for one month, then stop the aspirin and continue Plavex lifelong. That really irritated me. Oh, yeah, and their food was horrible too, hospital food. We, we knew that. I never really tasted hospital food until then. And, and yeah, it's, it's bad. So yeah, continue Plavex lifelong? I don't think so. Yeah, I was scared and I was confused because... How can I have a stroke? I'm brand new vegan. I was mad too. I was madder in hell. Why? 
how can I have high cholesterol? I don't eat meat. I don't eat dairy. I don't eat anything with has cholesterol in it. I don't even eat high fat foods. I plant based. How? And if you've ever seen this little meme, how do you know if somebody's vegan? Don't worry, I'll tell you. Uh, that was me. I was telling everybody who would listen, any doctor I found, how can I have a stroke doc? How? I've been eating vegan diet since 2008. My cholesterol, it was 201 total cholesterol. How? I don't eat meat, dairy, oil. And I actually had two different nurses come to me and say, well, you know, Chuck, plants have cholesterol too. No, they don't. I told them, you got Google out there on your little monitor. You might want to look that up. You're wrong, nurse. The reality is, I, I may never know why it happened. They didn't know. But, you know, finally, one doctor did say to me, you shouldn't be questioning why you had a stroke as a vegan. You should be thanking yourself that you were a vegan because it probably saved your life. So this is my own theory. It's one possible explanation. But, yeah, I ate like crap for all those years from 62, the year I was born, to 2008. A lot of meat, dairy, fast food, junk food, a lot of junk food. I didn't exercise. I didn't go to the gym. I smoked. Yeah, there's alcohol. I grew up in the 70s. There was drugs. Be totally honest, there were. I had two marriages, four kids, a crappy divorce. I've had crappy jobs. And 30 years, a night shift, living paycheck to paycheck. That's just life. And I thought that was the way we lived it. But in 2008, you know, I changed because I became vegan. And in 2013, when I started my blog, I went really strict with the whole food plant based in a while. So those years from 2008 until now, that probably did save my life. Because the doctor said most of the patients who have a stroke eating the way I did back there in the red, they don't end up so well if they survive at all. Um, but I was lucky. Uh, the only effect from my stroke was a mild case of dyslexia and dysarthria, which eventually went away. I couldn't talk. <laughs> I couldn't type. Being a food blogger, it knew right where to hit me, but that was really it. Uh, my son came out from Texas after I got home from the hospital, and we all went to my favorite beach, which I just was at this weekend, first time since a stroke, my happy place. And ironically, I'm right, well, this was a presentation I gave then, but I was there in the very hotel, and I made this video you see here just six days after my stroke. Um, you can hear it in my voice. Hey everybody, Chuck here, brand new vegan. Um, I'm here at the beach. I have some news for you. It's not easy news, but it needs to be said. You may notice a slight speech impediment. That is because six days ago on February 24th, I had a stroke. Pretty pathetic, huh? So I know I needed help, but I did not want to take these meds. The, the Plavix especially. If you take aspirin and Plavix together, it makes you bruise like crazy. Just a fly landing on my arm and I bruise like crazy. I wanted off those meds. But I wanted to make sure I didn't have another stroke too. So I emailed the one person in the world I knew would help. Dr. Essie. He is the man who actually proved you can reverse heart disease. And if you haven't read his book, definitely read his book. It'll open your eyes. And he did call me on the phone. I emailed him. He called me right back, which I've heard people tell me he will. He's really good about that, even though he's long retired. And he said, Chuck, you're in Portland, right? You need to go see Craig McDougall. Well, I know Craig. He used to be my doctor when I was at Kaiser. So he left Kaiser and... I haven't heard from him since, but this was perfect. All I had to do was figure out how to get hold of him. Where'd he go? I heard he was at OHSU, but I had no idea how to get a hold of him. But I know his dad, Dr. Don Medigal. So I wrote to him, and he said, Tech, you really need to come to my 10-day program. You need to come to Santa Rosa, and Dr. Wim will be here. I'll be here. Mary will be here. And if I need to, I'll take over your case. How can you argue with that? I mean... Dr. McDougall taking over your case of a stroke. I was all in. I went for it. I bought the tickets. It's expensive. If you never priced out the 10-day program when they used to have them in Santa Rosa before COVID, it's all online now. But 
back in Santa Rosa, it was expensive. But I bought the tickets. I paid my plane fare. I reserved my car. Everything was set. Like I said, it was expensive, but I had just had a stroke. It was worth it. I knew the Medugal program inside now, but to be watched and monitored and, and like babysat by Dr. Lim and Dr. Medugal, you can't put a price tag on that. So I waited and COVID hit. And we all went to lockdown. And for the first time ever, the 10 day was canceled. Now what? I thought, is this just my luck or what? First COVID, the stroke. So what did I do? I did my own program. The next 30 days, I did this. I ate a very strict, whole food, plant-based, very low-fat diet. I cleaned up my diet even more than I had before. And I'll, I'll tell you about that in just a second. I walked every day, made sure I got good sleep, drank lots of water, and I made sure I didn't stress because stress is another big risk factor for strokes. So meditation, you know, yoga, whatever you got to do. But I think this is the key here. If you're really paying attention, if you're in this boat, same boat I was in, and you're trying to get your doctor to take you off a pill or something, record everything. So I recorded my weight every single day, my blood pressure, same time in the morning, same blood pressure cup, same chair, same everything. How many steps did I walk that day? Which pills did I take? How much? Did I have a headache? Did I take Tylenol? ibuprofen every single day for 30 days with my diet and the exercise I kept this spreadsheet and you can see what happened after 30 days my weight went from 206 to 188 that's 18 pounds and my blood pressure dropped like a rock 30 days and it was all during the lockdown and all I did was walk and tweak the foods I was eating but more importantly, because I recorded that and I wrote down everything, I got off all her meds. So my family doc had a 30 day follow up after a soak with him and I showed him the chart and he was just amazed and he said, good job. Yes, you can quit taking the aspirin. You can get off the uh, Losartan, the blood pressure pills, and you can get off the cholesterol pills. And my neurologist, she's the one to have me on the Plavax. And she wasn't as easy so as my doc. She insisted I continue to take the Plavax. When can I stop? Never. And I showed her my chart. I showed her my spreadsheet. What about my progress? And she said, and this is her direct quote, you've attacked the health risks with a vengeance. Good for you. Nevertheless, Plavax would be more effective. More effective than eating right and exercising? Really? But please stay with it for now. Contact your pharmacy for refills. I said, Doc, I've only got a 30-day supply, and they're about ready to run out. You insist I take this Plavax. What do I do if I run out? And she said, I'll call it into your pharmacy. And my 30-day follow-up with her, she canceled it. And she never called in prescription. In fact, I have never heard from her again, ever. So what happened, I have no idea. But I can't take her Plavex if I can't get the pills and she never called it in. I didn't worry about it. So I've documented all of this both on my blog. There's a series of blog posts and on my YouTube channel. That video and the response has been overwhelming. So thank you all for that. And I'll put the links down below for all of that stuff if you want to check it out. But it also spawned a lot of new programs. I mean, like just during my walks, for instance, I would go out and... I walked every day for 30 days and then would just take pictures with my phone. The stupid things I saw on my walk, a flower, a bug, the sidewalk, signs, whatever. And I would put them on my Facebook group and people liked it so much. They started doing it too. And it's kind of like become its own thing. We call it walking Wednesday. And, you know, we've seen pictures from all over the world. It's, it's nuts, but it's so cool to see people do this and then earlier this year i took that same protocol i followed for 30 days and i created my 2021 challenge to share with you all and i can't count how many people have emailed me and messaged me to tell me they've lost their weight they reduced their blood pressure their blood sugar i mean it was amazing it really was here's some examples 
I've crossed out all the names for privacy, but you can read some of these and see the blood pressure numbers drop. I mean, this stuff works. It really does. Eat right and exercise. We've heard that in our entire life. That's all it is. And it does work. Here's the one over here in the right-hand corner. Um, today was one of those moments where my doctor and I were both in shock. I'm a type 1 diabetic. Five years ago, I was diagnosed with diabetic retinopathy. I'd gone through several eye injections before, but my anxiety got the best of me two years ago. I was literally avoiding going for a check because every single time my eye swelling had increased and I needed an injection. So I started my plant-based journey around two years ago, same time I stopped going to the doc. Fast forward to this past week, my husband went in for eye exam and the provider told me to get checked as well. I had to come in for a treatment, so I took a deep breath and went in, did my eye exam, and guess what? Complete reversal of diabetic retinopathy. No swelling, eye injection free. Doctor asked me what I was doing, I told him I changed my eating to plant-based and it's helped my diabetes as well. I admit I have not been 100% and have struggled more since COVID, but this is even more motivation. There's no doubt that food healed me. Isn't that amazing? Here's a couple, I can't believe it. On the February 5th, my blood pressure was 171 over 94, yikes. I messaged Chuck and on his advice, I cut out the processed food and the fats, blood, blood pressure monitor, I've lost seven pounds. Today, my reading was 105 over 72. This stuff really does work, guys. It was amazing. So, we call it Back to Basics, the program. And here it is. Drink water. First and foremost, not beer, not wine, not coffee. I did have coffee in the morning, but I didn't drink it all day. Don't drink pop, tea. Drink water. Exercise at least 30 minutes a day. I walked. You can do yoga, you can go to the gym, you can do whatever you want. Walking's easy. Get eight hours of good sleep every night. You really have to have your rest. Avoid stress. Turn off the news. Avoid your in-laws. <laughs> whatever you can do to avoid stress, do that. And then eat a low-fat, oil-free, whole food, plant-based diet. So you want to do that by avoiding all the calorie-dense foods. Some of these foods are healthy foods, I will admit. Nuts and seeds, yes, they're healthy for you. But if you got a condition like I did, cut them out for a month, just a month, and see what happens. And that includes the cashew sauce and the dressings and all that stuff. That includes peanut butter and tahini. No avocados, no olives. Limit your tempeh and tofu as much as you can. I love tofu, and I did have some tofu during my 30 days. Not much, but some. Same with bread. I love bread, so I switched to Ezekiel bread and I did that on purpose because I really don't like it. it. It It's okay, but I'd much rather have nice soft sourdough, right? But get rid of the bread. Go gluten-free if you have to. It's only 30 days. You can do it. Eat your Ezekiel bread if you have to have bread like I did. And avoid all the processed foods. The vegan butter, the vegan sour cream, the vegan cheese, the vegan crackers, all that stuff. And leave the restaurants alone. So during, you know, the time I did this, COVID was in full force. This was all easy. You couldn't go anywhere, right? But now I would still avoid the restaurants. Restaurant food, salt, sugar, and fat. That's all it is. Leave it alone for a month. Eat basic foods and see what happens. And no alcohol. None. No wine, no beer, no nothing. Instead, eat real food. So eat your beans, eat your rice, eat your potatoes, your greens, your vegetables and fruit. Here's a couple of samples. These came right out of my challenge. This is what I ate all the time. I'd have oatmeal and my Ezekiel toast. I'd have refried beans on a corn tortilla with some uh, rice and some you know veggies and a red chili sauce. Here's a bowl with a couple of potatoes, salad underneath. Again, more of the uh, Mexican-type veggies, cherry tomatoes, cilantro, jalapeno, stuff like that, refried beans, red chili sauce. It's just basic food. Eat real food. And that was it. That's all I did. And 30 days later, you saw the results. So if you try this, again, I'll put the links down below for my 30-day challenge. It's still here. It's still live. Anybody can do it. Let me know if it works. And... Just so you know, I'm not a doctor, so 
I'm not going to say this is going to prevent you from having a stroke or that you will have the same results I did if you do have one, but this is what I did and it seems to have helped. So thank you and good luck. And again, if you do try this, let me know if it helps. And here's how you all can find me. Obviously you're here on YouTube. You know that here's my blog. I'm on Instagram when it works and Facebook when it works. And here's my email address too. So drop me a line. Let me know how I can help you. And that was my presentation. I did the next oh, 15, 20 minutes with Q&A. Obviously, we can't do that live here. But if you do have any questions, feel free to drop me an email. Hit me up on Facebook or drop a comment here on YouTube. Ask away. I'll help you any way I can. So... There we go. That was the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. If you got something out of it, again, please comment down below and make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already, I do videos, either educational videos like this or uh, recipe videos every single week, whether I'm in town or not, it seems like, and, um, you don't want to miss those. So hit that notification bell and I will see you this coming weekend with a brand new recipe. So until then, this is Chuck from brand new vegan. Thanks for watching.